My name is Isaac Farley. I'm the technical support manager here at Crossref. I'm joined today by my colleagues, Paul Davis, technical Hello. support specialist. Hey, Paul. Hi. Thanks for joining. And Kathleen Luschek, who's on her way. She had to do a, a computer reboot because our, our software, Zoom, is it's not working as it should for her on her machine. So she'll be here shortly. The first thing I want to do today is make sure you can all raise your hand. So at the bottom of your screen, if you scroll down, you'll see between chat and Q&A, you'll see a, a raise your hand feature there. If you can raise your hand for me, just so I know that, that each of you know how to use that raise your hand function, that will allow us, if you have questions as we go, um, that you'd like to speak, that will, allow, that will notify me and, and allow me to stop so we can take your questions. So if you can raise your hand, right now on the bottom of the screen just so that we can test out that functionality. Great, great. It looks like many of you are able to raise your hands. You, you see it there, that, that's great. So um, if you have questions as we go along, feel free to raise your hand. Uh, and either myself or one of my colleagues, Paul or Kathleen, um, will be happy to answer your questions. You may also ask any of, the, any of your questions in our chat or Q&A section of, of Zoom. Uh, and uh, again, my, either myself or my colleagues will, will be here to answer, so, so thank you. I'm gonna go ahead and thank you, Paul. It looks like you're lowering everybody's hand. I am, while well, we're still waiting for my colleague Kathleen to join, we'll, we'll, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and launch a poll. This is just a three, three question poll to get everybody's understanding uh, of the Crossref admin tool now. So it's on your screen now, just three simple questions, three yes or no questions about the admin tool to gauge um, your understanding of the tool right now before we start the, before we start and get into the demonstration itself. Great, looks like some questions are coming in, some answers are coming in. Feel free to continue to fill out that survey on your, on your screen, that poll. Thank you. Thanks, looks like more than half of you have now answered the, the poll. So I'll give you about another 30 seconds or so to, to answer these questions. Okay, still a few of you, still waiting on a few of you, give you 10 more seconds or so. Great, okay. So these are, this is the all results from, from uh, these three questions. It looks like we have an even split on the third one, almost an even split on the first one and the second one, uh, not, as, not as even a split. Um, so the first question, can you easily find the deposit history of individual DOIs in the admin tool? Um, would anybody who answered yes uh, care to raise your hand and tell us why you think it's yes? Any volunteers? Okay, the answer is yes. You can easily find the deposit history of individual DOIs within the admin tool. I'll show you how to do that uh, in this demo today. Um, so after today's session, everybody should understand that, that bit of it and be able to answer this question. Yes, absolutely. So that's one of my goals for today's session. The second question, can you easily find and resolve conflicts using our admin tool? 25% of you said yes, 75% of you said no. The answer is yes. 
you can easily find and resolve any conflict that our system has has flagged as a conflict using the admin tool. So the answer to that one is also yes. And then the last question, can you view past deposits, whole submissions made from the web deposit form and or metadata manager? Looks like this is a, almost an even split, yes and no's. Uh, anybody willing to promote yourself and volunteer to answer why you thought this one might be yes? Go ahead and raise your hand if so. Okay, the answer to that one is yes. So all three of these are yes. You can easily find the deposit history for individual DOIs that have been registered with us using the admin tool. You can resolve conflicts for DOIs that have been flagged as conflicts using the admin tool. And you can also find past deposits made from the wet deposit form and or metadata manager using our admin tool. And we'll go through each of those today. So. The goal of today's workshop is to, to work, to walk through the admin tool, as I've said throughout this, and thank you for joining us. Um, this workshop will be useful for all members who register content with us, as you can, as that third question kind of hinted at. So um, whether or not you use the admin tool and register, uh, register your metadata using XML, or whether or not you use our web deposit form, metadata manager, or even OJS, the external system um, by, the, by PKP. Um, everyone should get something out of today's, today's session. So um, we'll start with a demonstration of the admin tool. That'll take maybe 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll have some time at the end to answer your questions. So for the demonstration itself, uh, I'm gonna walk through an overview of all the tabs within the tool. I thought it would be useful to just start uh, just start really with the basics and walk you through what each tab does. Um, we'll also go through how to submit XML. Um, I'll show you what the deposit queue is uh, and, and, and help you make sense out of what you're seeing on the screen um, for submissions and submission processing. We'll talk a little bit about troubleshooting submission errors. Um, we'll talk about one of those questions that we had in the, in the poll earlier, viewing past submissions also resolving conflicts, and then um, re reviewing the deposit history of all of your DOIs, uh, any DOI that's ever been registered with us, you can, you can see that, that past history of, of those deposits in the admin tool, and we'll walk through that. And then last, we'll talk about resetting your password. So I've got a useful link there about, we, all of this stuff is documented in our support documentation, so uh, We'll be providing links throughout to helpful resources within our documentation so you can use that uh, as you go back from today's session uh, to do this yourself. So let me get started with, with the demonstration itself. I'm gonna switch here to a different screen, bear with me. So, Going to start by going to doi.crossref.org. This is where our admin tool lives. So I'm going to be using one of our test accounts. My password manager wants me to use a different one, but I'm going to override that. I'm going to be using our N plus test account to walk you through an example. So um, in the past, you may have heard us refer to the admin tool as the deposit admin tool or the deposit system or even the admin console. We, we refer to it internally as the admin tool. That's what we're calling it today. In the session, you'll see our documentation has been updated uh, to just refer to it as the admin tool as well. It's central to you as a member when registering content um, and it will be central to this, this demonstration. Um, when you log in with your Crossref username and password, you'll be greeted with this screen. This is our home screen. You'll see some of the more popular links or tasks already called out for you. So there's some quick links here right in the admin tool itself. So there's this submitted, sub, submission ad, administration, uploading your submissions, and then viewing the submission queue. And they're quick linked right here, like I said, on, on the admin tool home, home tab. Um, there are other ways to, to navigate to these popular links, which I'll show you throughout the, the demonstration, but remember they're, they're here as well. So first is the users tab. 
this is where you can reset your password associated with, with your Crossref uh, username. Uh, the username and password you, you sign into doi.crossref.org, just as a reminder, can also be used to register content in our VR helper tools, the web deposit form, metadata manager, and you'll need it if you're registering content using OJS as well, um, the online journal systems platform. So this is where you would reset a password uh, once you've logged in. Next is our submissions tab, and I'll go in, I'll go in order here. So we'll start with this, uh, with the administration sub tab. So these are three very powerful sub tabs. Um, let's, let's take them in order, like I said. So this, is the, this administration tab is the sub tab you would use to find any of your past submissions to Crossref. Uh, we'll go through this in more detail with an example here in a little while, but for each submission, submission you send to us, we give that submission a unique ID um, that you can use to always find the submission itself and the result of that submission. Um, one useful hack while we're on this page, a blank search here. So if you just run this search itself, it will return all of your past submissions uh, and you can review them um, like this. So you can see here's all of the submissions that, that we've ever submitted using our Amplus test account. Um, and the submissions that have a little E here means there was an error with that submission. The submissions that do not have an E means that the submission was processed completely successfully. So um, we'll look at some of these examples throughout. Next is the upload sub tab. So this is where you can register or, or update metadata with us using this metadata upload type. So you can see there are several types here um, that allow you to, to carry out different functions and register, um, uh, register and take different actions. The most popular of, of these, the one that's used most often is the metadata upload type. Um, you can also run uh, XML queries um, which give you significant control over the DOI matching process using the query upload type, and you can also alias DOIs using this conflict management uh, upload type. Again, we'll go through an example so you can see a metadata upload, the most popular type of submission um, in this demonstration. The next, we'll talk about the show system queue. This is this sub tab gives you a glimpse into the heart of the admin tool and shows you the submissions that are currently working their way through the admin tool. When you upload a submission or a deposit to us, we accept that submission into a queue or a line. Um, there's always a delay from when you hit submit to when um, your submission is processed. Usually that delay from when you hit that submit to when you, we begin processing your submission is seconds and Sometimes you may not even notice that, but during peak times, it can take us minutes or even hours to process incoming submissions. I've been with Crossref for almost two years, nearly two years, and um, I've only seen it take our system. Uh, we've only had a few days in the two years I've been here where it's taken hours, but that is possible. Um, we have 20 threads available to sim simultaneously process your submissions, and we allow up to 10,000 simultaneous submissions per member. Maybe many of you are not pushing that limit, but we do have some of our, our larger members who register a lot of metadata with us who, who sometimes reach that 10,000 limit. Obviously, we can't process tens of thousands of submissions at a time since we only have 20 threads, so we queue those submissions and use some sophisticated logic in the back end so that submissions are processed equitably. For example, only one user can occupy five threads. You can see the RSC here is occupy, occupying five threads. They have more submissions uh, down here that are pending. So as these five drain through or work their way through uh, the queue, the next one will be picked up. Um, so uh, not only do large users who are submitting large numbers of submissions uh, have to share these equitably, but if, there, if single submissions get, are given higher priority in the system uh, over these chunks or bulk submissions. These, I also wanted to mention that there has been some confusion from our users about these other tabs like system control, fund ref, registry control, and fund ref dedupe control. As you can see, I'm using one of our test accounts. It has the same permissions as it would your account. So you can see these are grayed out. These are not available um, for you as a, as a member. Um, that has caused some confusion before, but um, you'll see that 
uh, and other areas of the admin tool, but it just means that these are areas that are only available to our super users, our, um, our internal accounts um, that have those permissions. I'm not gonna go into great detail about the queries tab here, um, but this is where you would run XML formatted querying to match reference DOIs. So, you, so um, there's, this is kind of a whole, um, uh, uh, maybe a, a whole uh, webinar itself. So I'm not gonna go into great detail there, but uh, just wanted to mention it since it, it is part of our admin tool. Uh, next is the reports tab. This was the, the focus of one of our questions in the poll earlier. Um, this is where you can see the deposit history for any single DOI. Um, and so you would see uh, that, that registration history from the initial registration to any updates or transfers that may have occurred over the life of your DOI. Um, again, we'll see this, I'll show you this tab in action with an example DOI um, when I go through, when I go through the full demonstration. Um, and then finally, this metadata admin tab. Um, internally, we use this tab heavily for reviewing, updating, and transferring title records, as you can see from these four grayed out uh, sub tabs here. But for you, uh, this is the tab you'd use to review and resolve DOIs that are in conflict. So our system flags DOIs as in conflict when very similar bibliographic metadata like title and authors is registered for more than one DOI. Uh, again, we'll look at this in more detail shortly with a, with a real world example. So now the example itself. So this is one of uh, the tools we use internally. Um, maybe some of you use it as well. It's called Oxygen. It's an XML editor. Um, I actually wanted to show you uh, how we would submit uh, a change uh, in the admin tool. So this is the XML in front of me. This is for one of our test uh, DOIs. And you can see um, I'm the I, it, it, it's one of my DOIs that I created for some ORCID testing. Uh, it's got my name associated with it. Uh, and some just dummy metadata in here. Uh, and you can see there's a typo in the abstract, which is also visible. Um, if I look at, if, if I look at the same, uh, if I look at the same DOI using our API. So I wanted to, so this is the, this is the record in our API. You can look at any of the metadata that's ever been registered for a DOI using our API. And you can see here, this matches the XML. Um, this is the abstract itself. I've got a random slash in here uh, that I'd like to fix. Uh, and I can do that using the admin tool. So I'm, I'm going to actually fix this in the XML. So it's just as simple as coming in and removing it, proving this sentence. and then saving it. And then what I'll do is I will navigate back over to the, to the admin tool itself. Again, here's my homepage when I log in. What I wanna do is use the submissions tab and upload. And this is, a, this is an update to my existing metadata. So I wanna use a metadata upload and I'm gonna to go to my, my system and find my file. This is this test admin that I just made the change to. And then I'm going to upload it and submit it. You can see I get a success message for that submission. That just means that it has been accepted into the queue. And it actually processed so quickly um, because we don't have very many submissions in the queue right now. It actually processed so quickly that you don't see it here. Um, so it was a matter of seconds, but uh, I can find that. Um, not only should I have received uh, an email to, my, to the email address I used in the metadata, but I can also find that using that administration tab. So what I can do is I know that I submitted this here. I wanna see all of my past submissions and there it is right at the top with an error. And it says record not processed because submitted version is less or equal to previously submitted version. You can see there's an error message here associated with, with, my, uh, with my deposit. It can also click here, click to view. This will show me the XML itself. So this has all of the XML uh, that I submitted and this is using my, my browser view, um, but I can see the record itself and what I submitted to it. You can see 
um, it did register the change that I made. It just didn't process that change because I forgot. I knowingly forgot to change my timestamp here. This timestamp has to be incremented for each submission. Um, so I failed to do that. So I need to do that now. Um, but I wanted to show you these error messages. So this message provides some information about what went wrong. So here's the submission ID uh, that is specific to, to this submission that I have submitted here. Um, and the message that is returned tells me there's a problem with my timestamp. Additionally, at the bottom, you can see both of my DOIs, the article level DOI and the, the journal level DOI both failed um, because of that timestamp error. So what I can do is return to my XML, simply update that timestamp. and then resubmit it. Again, I'll get that success message. Let's see if I can catch it in the, in the queue itself. That process so quickly that I didn't see it that time either. Um, but again, I can find Submission from the last day. Again, this will allows me some filtering. Let's see what error I have this time. Ah, my DOI. So you can see I had some success here. My it looks like the I had I failed because this journal level DOI um, it has a different timestamp than the article level DOI. So one DOI was successful and one DOI failed. So let's actually look at this DOI and see if I can find its deposit history. Again, this is in the reports tab. I can actually go in and look at this test DOI and see all of the deposits that I've made for it. So you can see I first registered it back in October 2019 and have updated it a few times for test reasons. Uh, and this was my most recent submission here the one that I just showed you. So it will link over. And again, I can look at the XML that's available here. This has been updated. My abstract has been updated. The slash has been removed here um, because of my success message uh, that was available here. It says my, my DOI was successfully updated right here. Additionally, within the, within the uh, admin tool, we can determine where a deposit has come from. So let me just show you some of the, the historical submissions for this account. And you can see uh, that this was my XML that I created myself and uploaded. All of our submission, all the submissions that are processed from Metadata Manager have begin with MDT. So if you're reviewing your submission log, and looking for details about a metadata manager deposit, you can look for these MDT file names, and that will tell you that this submission was generated out of metadata manager. And you can see, I can view that here. And even the uh, metadata that is generated from that helper tool, metadata manager creates XML on your behalf, um, has some information in the metadata that also uh, allows you to, to see that the origin of that is a metadata manager, or as we call it internally, an MDT deposit. Additionally, you can see um, from this deposit that this came from the web form. This is the web deposit form. And you can see all of our deposits that begin with CR and then have a unique string of, of letters and numbers indicate that this submission has come from the web deposit form. Uh, Additionally, uh, OJS also has a unique file name structure. Um, those file names uh, are a unique string of eight characters followed by a, a dash, four characters followed by a dash. So it's, it's uh, let's see, eight, 
four, 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 and then eight. So it's, it's a very long string uh, of the file name, but um, those, are, oh, those are unique to OJS. So if you see something that, that looks, um, I, can, I can paste an example here. I don't have any examples from, from this account, but uh, I'll paste an example uh, in the chat window later. Um, so you can see an OJ, what an OJS file structure looks like. So you can determine that if you're looking through your, your um, submission, uh, submissions administration log here. I wanna take a, since we've gone through a sample submission, I wanna just pause for a minute and see if anybody has any questions before moving on to the kind of the second half of the demonstration. Any questions? Feel free to drop those right in the chat window or the Q&A Q &A window and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Okay, I've just dropped in, uh, just going to drop in an example OJS file name. So you can see that this is the OJS example file structure. These are unique to OJS. You can see there's eight characters, numbers and letters, followed by a hyphen or a dash, four, 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 and then I think that looks like maybe 12. Um, if you see something like that, you know that's an OJS file name that was created out of the OJS system. Again, OJS is open journal system by our partners at PKP. Okay. I share my screen again. Go back into the admin tool. We talked about this a little bit, but you can also um, you can also go in and use this submissions administration tab to only select to only search for errors. And let's say um, you knew there was a submission in the last three days um, that you sent us um, that had an error in it. You can search for it here. Obviously, my submission from earlier that had had errors in it is listed here uh, as an example. So that's a good way to, to use the submissions administration tab to find problematic submissions. Um, or you can limit it by the type of submission you made. So it's, it should be, a, it's a powerful tool to find information about your previous submissions. I wanted to talk a bit about conflict reports. So we have, uh, we have a monthly report that's sent to each of our members um, that, that documents conflicts. And again, a conflict is a, is a DOI that has uh, some level of matching or duplicated metadata. And so our system flags uh, DOIs in conflict and then sends you a report for those conflicts and I'll just show you what that comp what those conflict reports look like And you can go about finding those In our support center, so here's full information about those conflict reports and you can actually go and view the conflict reports themselves um, by the member so uh, this is an overview of all conflicts for all of our members um, historically. So you can find yourself uh, here. Let's see, and I'll pick on this member here and you can see this will show you all of those DOIs that have been flagged as potentially conflicting 
um, with our system. And, and that re requires some humor, human intervention to, d to decide uh, whether or not that, co that conflict is legitimate or uh, if it really represents uh, a duplication in the submission. So what we can do is grab, you can see here, there's each, each conflict that's flagged uh, has a unique identifier that's created for that conflict. Um, you can also search by DOI Let's search by this conflict ID itself. So what we can do is, if you ever get one of these conflict reports from us, um, you can navigate to the conflict report itself here, like I'm showing you on your screen, or you can look this up in our admin tool using this metadata admin tab under conflict management. So I've grabbed the conflict ID, submit it here, and I can see these are the two DOIs for this uh, for this publisher uh, that are marked as in conflict. I can get more information about that conflict by clicking on this little icon here. And it will show me some basic bibliographic information about these two DOIs that have been submitted. So you can see um, the year, the publication year, the volume, uh, the author, even the author and the page and the title are all look very similar than they look like an exact match. So for me, um, not being the publisher, it leads me to believe that, that perhaps they have accidentally registered two DOIs for the same content. That's, a, that's something that they need to review and determine if, if these two DOIs are truly in conflict, um, but they can resolve that conflict using the admin tool. So let's say that they decided that um, this top DOI here, the one that ends in 26.1, should be the primary. They can simply select it. Uh, and then mark it as the primary uh, using using the admin tool here. As I said earlier, we also have uh, this users tab that can allow you to uh, reset your password. Um, we when when you join Crossref, we provide you um, with your username and password. Um, you may update that at any time uh, here using this users tab. Just wanted to point that out again. And then I wanted to mention that uh, we also have a test system. It's at test.crossref.org that mirrors uh, our production uh, admin tool. Um, and it allows you, if you are registering XML, it allows you to test that XML um, here. So you can test your metadata uploads using our test system. And we don't configure um, all new accounts for this test system since a minority of our use this test system, but if you're interested in uh, obtaining a test, a test um, login, um, just email us at support at crossref.org, support .crossref, support crossref excuse me, uh, and we can get that set up for you. Again, it's, it, it's a complete mirror of the, of the production system, um, but again, we'll allow you to uh, test submissions um, before submitting. And then lastly, we do have occasional hiccups with our admin tool and our other services. And you may find uh, information about the status of any of our services and tools, including the admin tool at status.crossref.org. Um, and you can see that the admin tool is available here under content registration. As I've showed you throughout this demonstration, the admin tool is fully operational right now, as is the test admin tool. Uh, and this status page uh, confirms that. So if you ever have questions about one of our services, including the admin tool, you may go to status.crossref.org uh, and take a look at the status of, of um, our services. Looks like we have some questions. Let's see. Thanks, Paul. Yeah, you can. If you have any questions after today's um, after today's webinar, feel free to reach out to us at support at crossref.org. We also have a new 
discussion forum, our community forum. It's available uh, at community.crossref.org. We'd love to invite you to join that discussion. Um, so not only can you reach out to us and get one-on-one uh, -on -one support at support at crossref.org, but we'd like to encourage you to reach out to your uh, fellow members within our community forum to share ideas, um, ask questions, and interact there. So it's available again at community.crossref.org, and I put the link to uh, our tech, the technical support area of the community form there. So we have a couple of different areas, metadata manager, technical support. Um, there's several different new categories there that you can explore and find information about, uh, about the latest in the Crossref community. Um, we also have some upcoming webinars scheduled for this month. So I encourage you, if you're interested in learning more about participation reports on the 18th of March, uh, to go to crossref.org slash webinars and register for that. And then we have an Ask Me Anything webinar on the 25th of March. So please check us out in an upcoming webinar and uh, I invite you to join us at the community forum. I'm gonna stop sharing now and uh, allow for questions and answers. Sure, so there's a question uh, that has come in that says, what is the difference between this webinar's admin tool and the metadata manager tool? Because in the previous webinar about the metadata manager tool, the deposits I had made with the admin tool did not appear. Looks like that one's been answered. Um, thank you, Paul, for reaching out there. But uh, as, as Paul says, the metadata manager is really a, a helper tool that creates the XML files for you. Uh, so the interface is, is new and updated, uh, and the idea is that um, our members who maybe aren't interested or are, are not able to submit XML files can, can have a helper tool like Metadata Manager um, create those XML files. So Metadata Manager, um, what you do is you walk through and create uh, answer some, some questions about bibliographic metadata and, and, and complete the fields and then submit that to uh, sub submit that into Metadata Manager, and then Metadata Manager queues that submission and sends it into this admin tool. So that's the reason why all of your uh, submissions from Metadata Manager, as I showed, those file names are MDT, beginning with MDT, are also available in the admin tool because they get, they get funneled through the same system. Uh, so thank you for your question. We have another question here. Sion says, sorry, can you show me one more time how to find the DOIs that we have added or registered? Sure. Let me share my screen and go back to the admin tool. Okay, so I go to DOI, doi.crossref.org. Log in with my Crossref credentials that were shared with me when I joined. And from here, if I want to find the DOIs, if I'm, I'm looking for an individual DOI, I can use the reports tab to see the, to see the complete history for that DOI. And let's say I'm using this example here. This is again, my, my, uh, dummy data that I that I showed throughout this session. Um, this shows me all of the past submissions. So each of these each of these lines is a unique submission that I've I've submitted into the admin tool. This is the most recent, the one that I showed earlier. And I can see those details. I can see the submission ID. I can see that it was submit submitted by me, the depositor, and plus. I can see the file name that I submitted, and I can see the time it was received, um, how long it took to, so it was received at 1023 and 18 seconds. It began processing two seconds later, and then a second after that, it was finished processing. So this whole process from me sub hitting, clicking submit to it being registered with us took three seconds. Um, and I can then view um, any success messages or failure messages here. In this in this message window, so 
um, you can see I submitted two DOIs in this submission. One was successful um, and one failed. My, my journal level DOI uh, has been updated more recently with a different uh, timestamp than my article level DOI. So one of the two was successful and one failed. And then I can actually view the XML as well by clicking on this click to view. So that's one way to find specifics about a, an individual DOI. If I'm looking for information about submissions, because sometimes our, our members submit more than one DOI or more than two DOIs in each submission, you can, again, this is the home tab. You can either use submissions administration, or you can go directly there. Like I said, it's, it's high, it, there's a quick link right here on the home page, you can go to submission administration. It'll take you right there. And let's say you don't know what the submission ID was. Um, it should have you, it, it should have been sent to the email that was included in the XML that you submitted to us. Um, but let's say you don't have that and you know that it was submitted in the last three days. Uh, you can do a blank search for that. And it will pull up all of your submissions in the last three days uh, and you can select which submission you you feel like it might be, or you can review those submissions in detail. If you don't put again, if you don't put any timing into your, uh, if you don't filter it anyway, it's going to give you all of your submissions. So this would give me all fifty four of my submissions that I've ever made for my username, and I can go back and look at look at each one of those if I want to, and it shows twenty at a time. See, we've used this in the past for testing purposes, back in January for, uh, for another webinar. Other questions? Uh, so we had another question uh, in Tasha says, once you select a DOI as primary in the conflict report, does it automatically remove that DOI from the next report? The answer is it should, yes. The answer is yes. Um, we did have a bug with that um, most recently in February that we fixed. Um, so perhaps you may have seen some, if you did mark a DOI, if you did mark a DOI as primary in a conflict, um, you may have seen that repeat in gen from January to February because we had a bug that we that we corrected in February. So the answer is it should, yes. Um, and if, if it doesn't, let us know. What ac Deborah asks, what action is needed for DOI submission warnings? Um, and so that, that's, a, that's a great question, Deborah. thank you. So anytime a DOI uh, is registered that is in conflict, you will get a warning message. So our system, uh, will flag that that DOI and say this looks this looks a lot like uh, a DOI that has been previously submitted. The bibliographic metadata that you've submitted for this DOI looks to be very similar to uh, a previous DOI that you've registered. Our system will then flag that, and you'll see a warning message in your in your uh, submission log. The DOI. That warning doesn't mean that the DOI hasn't been registered, it has. It just means that maybe you'd like to review that uh, now. The, the warning is meant to alert you that there needs to be some, some human intervention. You need to, there needs to be some review of that submission and that DOI. Um, and so uh, our system believes that those DOIs may be in conflict. Um, there are certain examples where uh, a DOI, our system will flag a DOI as potentially being in conflict using this warning uh, language, uh, this warning submission uh, status, and um, the DOIs may not be in conflict. So for instance, errata, the, the metadata that's registered for errata uh, is usually minimal. And so our system um, will not uh, will not distinct may not distinguish 
submissions with minimal metadata as being distinct. So it requires some human intervention. Perhaps um, those DOIs are really not duplicates, but the metadata that's being submitted just appears that they are. So it requires some review on your end. Good question. Thanks, Deborah. Other questions? We've got a little over 10 minutes. We'll stay as long as you, as long as you like. We'd, we'd love to hear questions. You can drop those into chat, put those into the, the Q&A window, or if you like, um, if there's something that you'd like to share with us, if you'd like to share your screen, I can promote you to a panelist and allow you to share your screen. And we can actually look at one of your examples if we have anybody uh, on today's webinar that's, that's interested. Brian, good question. Thanks for joining today, Brian. Brian's one of our colleagues here, product director. Um, conflicts can also be for things like preprints to publish article matches. Uh, I don't believe that the system flags preprints uh, as being in conflict. Paul, can you confirm that for me? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, I just had to find Thank you. Uh, a mute button. Uh, Thanks for the yes. backup. <laughs> I, I think that um, the system doesn't uh, look at preprints and publish article matches in the same way. Yeah, I agree. So, so preprints wouldn't be flagged as in conflict. They wouldn't. You wouldn't receive that warning message that Deborah asked about uh, for a preprint article. No. Other questions? We'll give everybody two or three more minutes to answer to ask your questions. Happy to hang out, hang on for another ten more minutes if if there are any more questions. But I'll give you two to three more minutes. Um, if there are no more questions, we'll we'll end the um, we'll end the session at that time. Oh, here's a, here's a question. Deborah asks uh, about. Um, we have another question into the Q and A area. Um, she asked about correcting errors that resulted from, from a billing error. Is there a way to see the billing invoice at the time of the submission? No, unfortunately there isn't. Our system, um, so, so we, run, uh, we run our bills on a quarterly cycle. So any, any DOIs that have been registered for the previous quarter, we run those um, uh, at, the end of each, at the end of each quarter so that that bill isn't created until the end of the process. So if you registered, for instance, if you registered DOIs between January 1st and the end of March, March 31st, um, your bill will, will be created um, at the end of March and then said to you. So um, that invoice, the, the invoice and the submission timing um, are delayed.
Deborah, feel free to ask a follow-up question there if I didn't completely answer your question. I'd be happy to, um, I've allowed you to, to speak as well if you want to. Um, looks like you're muted, but if you'd like to ask a question, um, feel free to, to speak it as well. I've promoted you so you can speak, Deborah. Paul, thanks for dropping in some information about conflict reports um, there into the chat. Owen says, not a question, but a suggestion. If possible, it would be very helpful if the invoice line showed the actual DOI that was registered. Yes, we agree. Um, we can, if you need some clarification, we do have some reports that are available, Sion, if you want to reach out to us again at support at crossref.org. If you have questions about the individual DOIs that are part of a specific invoice, if you have any questions ever about that, you can reach out to us again at support at crossref.org, but we would very much like that as well. I think yeah. um, just on another note <clears throat> on that, uh, we would we would love that, but um, there are there are some invoices that get sent out that would be um, rather large mm -hmm. <laughs> um, if, uh, if um, all the DOIs were, were printed. But yeah, as Isaac said, there is reports avail available um, that we can that we can get for you if that's something you would need. Yeah, many of our members um, have so many DOIs that sending sending a report like that for even a quarter's worth of registrations um, w would be very lengthy and and difficult to to deliver. But um, we can run a report like that for you uh, if you have questions about your invoice. Happy to do so. Again, if you need help after today's session, feel free to reach out to us at support at crossref.org. And we'd love to see you in the community forum and an upcoming webinar uh, later in March. Go ahead and conclude today's session. Thank you all for joining. It's a great session and really appreciate all the great questions that were asked throughout. Paul, Kathleen, Brian, many thanks for joining. Thanks, Isaac. Thanks, everyone. Thank for you. Joining. Have a great day. Thanks, Isaac. Thank you.